Hey everyone, welcome to Character Crash Course. After our last Crash Course on Marvel's most iconic character, Spider-Man, we're going to change things up just a little bit today by talking about one of Marvel's more obscure characters, Moon Knight. Moon Knight has unfortunately flown under the radar for most of his existence, so today we're going to try to help spread the word on this underappreciated character. We're going to talk a little bit about the origin of the character, what makes him so unique and interesting as a superhero, and some good places to find the character and see for yourself how awesome he is. Moon Knight was created in 1975 by Doug Minch and Don Perlin for his first appearance in Werewolf by Night number 32. The character was a big hit with readers of the series, which influenced Marvel to give him a little more attention with Marvel Spotlight number 28 and 29, along with multiple appearances in many other comic series. It took five years of brief appearances in other comics for Marvel to finally launch his own standalone comic series in 1980, which was published at a very loaded supply for only 38 issues until it was cancelled in 1984. Since then, the character has had a very spur erratic pattern of publication. Most of Moon Knight's comic series have been praised by fans, but haven't had the financial success to continue for long periods of time. Unlike Spider-Man, most of you watching this probably don't know very much about this character's backstory, so we're going to start from the very beginning here. Mark Spector was a former US Marine term mercenary who, in his line of work, befriended French pilot Jean-Paul Ducamp, who he so creatively nicknames Frenchie. Mark and Frenchie eventually find themselves working in Egypt for this D-bag named Rao Bushman, who plans to loot from an ancient tomb that was just discovered by the archaeologist Dr. Peter Alron and his daughter Marlene. Bushman brings his crew to the tomb, kills Dr. Alron, and orders the other mercenaries to execute innocent villagers. Mark tries to retaliate against him, but is beaten half to death and left in the desert to die. Two villagers find Mark and carry him back to the tomb, where he has a vision in which the Egyptian moon god Khonshu brings him back to life under the condition that he becomes his avatar on Earth. Mark Spector returns to the US with his new love interest Marlene. Mark decides to distance himself from his dark past by assuming the identity Stephen Grant and invests the money he made as a mercenary to become a millionaire. He uses this money to fund his elaborate crime fighting technology such as his crescent moon shaped shurikens and vehicles such as his signature moon copter which is often piloted by Frenchie. On top of this, he creates the identity of taxi driver Jake Lockley to network with streetwise characters such as Bertrand Crawley and Gina Landers, whose sons Ricky and Ray help him out with his crime fighting. Throughout his costume career, he picks up a few arch rivals, such as Black Spectre, The Profile, The Werewolf, Shadow Knight, and Midnight Man, with Raoul Bushman popping up here and there along the way as his main villain. He occasionally works with teams such as the West Coast Avengers and Secret Avengers, although his antisocial personality makes it tough for him to be a team player. Now, hopefully we didn't lose you with that long-winded explanation of the character, because this is the most important part of the video. What makes Moon Knight so cool? Generally, when you look up Moon Knight, you'll find tons of forums and videos where people just say he's basically Marvel's version of Batman, or call him a Batman ripoff. This meme-ish simplification generally comes from people who have little to no knowledge of the character and don't understand what truly drives Moon Knight to do what he does. Sure, Moon Knight has a secret identity of a millionaire and uses his bottomless piggy bank to fund his vigilantism, but Batman isn't exactly the only super superhero known for this anyway, and it can be argued that this trait was originally the Green Hornets more than anyone else's. Batman and Moon Knight are also compared for their similar use of technology and hand-to-hand -hand combat for crime fighting, but it's often implied that Moon Knight actually gains superhuman powers when there is a full moon. Beyond those two comparisons, Moon Knight differs from Batman pretty drastically. Probably the most interesting thing about this character is how over time the combination of his dark past and his multiple secret identities slowly degrades his sanity. This eventually spirals into an apparent case of dissociative identity disorder throughout the comics. On top of all this, he even starts having potentially schizophrenic hallucinations of his god, Khonshu, in multiple forms, such as a faceless bushman and whatever this thing is. As opposed to Batman, who is fueled by his obsession with justice after witnessing his parents' deaths, Moon Knight is in a constant battle with himself to pay for his past as a ruthless killer. He also frequently redefines his moral code based on his interpretations of what he believes Khonshu wants from him. And because of the ambiguity of Khonshu's existence, it often appears that Mark is willfully changing these interpretations to justifies brutal urges, which includes killing people or carving a crescent moon into their foreheads. <gasps> so as you can see, this alone is enough to show that Moon Knight strongly contrasts Batman and his no-killing rule. But even when he keeps his murderous tendencies at bay, Moon Knight is still a reckless fighter who lacks the skilled perfection of Batman. Moon Knight isn't the world's greatest detective or a plot armor protected MacGyver who has a miracle solution to every puzzle. He isn't an expert in science, vehicle operation, and shark battling. Moon Knight is just a very skilled fighter who may be a little too confident in his abilities. He constantly crashes his moon copter, gets himself beaten half to death, and gets his friends and teammates injured or killed. Does this make him a bad superhero? Well, maybe, but it makes him an absolutely fascinating character. The experience of reading Moon Knight will have you constantly asking, 
Why won't you die? Moon Knight should definitely be dead by now. In fact, he has died, or so we think. There are many instances where Moon Knight is supposedly brought back from the dead, but there is a constant ambiguity to everything in his world. Has he ever actually died? Is Khonshu a real deity? Is Mark actually insane, or is his reality just being toyed with? Does Mark actually gain superhuman powers from a full moon, or is it just a placebo? Are all these characters in the story real, or merely just hallucinations? If you're a fan of psychological thrillers and stories that mess with your perception of reality, you will love Moon Knight. Hopefully at this point you're interested in this awesome character and can't wait to dive into his story. Unfortunately, Moon Knight related entertainment is a lot harder to find than A-listers like Batman and Spider-Man. As far as movies and TV shows go, this is about all he's gotten. Werewolves exist. My colleague Mark Spector's area of expertise. So yeah, you're gonna have to stick to comics if you're interested in Moon Knight. The early Moon Knight comics are not available on Marvel Unlimited, so you'll have to track them down elsewhere online or at your local comic shop if you're looking to binge from the very beginning. But like most pre-modern age comic books, they haven't aged very well anyway, so it's okay to skip out on those. Moon Knight's most critically acclaimed comics have been published in this century, so we're going to recommend starting with the recent stuff. Probably the easiest run of the comics to get into is the 2011 series by Brian Michael Bendis. This relatively short run is a great starting point because it doesn't really require any context to read, and is pretty much its own self-contained story. You also get to see Moon Knight assume the personalities of Wolverine, Spider-Man, and Captain America. Yes, you are looking at Moon Knight dressed as Spider-Man with Wolverine claws. That alone should be a good enough reason to read this. However, this run lacks the supporting characters that are usually in Moon Knight comics, such as Marlene, Crawley, and Frenchie, so you won't learn a whole lot about Mark Spector's personal life outside of crime fighting in this story. So if you're looking to really dive into the world of Moon Knight, we recommend the 2006 Charlie Houston series. This volume really explores Mark Spector's damaged psychological state and introduces the frequent hallucinations of Khonshu that have become a staple in Moon Knight comics today. Now, the characters in this story don't get much of an introduction, so it may be a little confusing at first, but hopefully after watching this video you'll have the basic Moon Knight knowledge you need to jump right into it. If you prefer more traditional superheroes with strong moral codes, don't worry because there's still some Moon Knight out there for you. The follow-up to the 2006 series, Vengeance of the Moon Knight, portrays a Moon Knight who is determined to bury his antisocial tendencies and be a true hero. Also, don't worry about those guns, they just fire these non-lethal crescent moon bola things. This series is a pretty good starting point that doesn't really require much context to read. The recap page makes it seem otherwise, but just take my word for it. It really doesn't take much context. The new Marvel Now run of the comics by Warren Ellis is also pretty genius if you're looking to keep up with the current stuff. This series introduces Moon Knight's new crime-fighting personality, Mr. Knight, who wears a snazzy suit and works with the cops as a secret non-professional detective. This is also a great starting point if you're not looking to play tons of catch-up. We also highly recommend checking out his appearance in the Warriors story arc of Ultimate Spider-Man, starting with issue number 79 and the Ultimate Knight story arc starting with issue number 106. In these arcs, the Ultimate Universe version of Moon Knight goes undercover as a character named Ronin to take down the Kingpin. We won't spoil what happens, but just take our word for it that it's a brilliant Moon Knight story. Not much of a comic reader? Well, you can still witness how awesome Moon Knight is in a few video games. Moon Knight is a playable character in the PS3 and Xbox 360 versions of Marvel Ultimate Alliance, and he's a main character in the story mode of Spider-Man Web of Shadows. You could also play as him in LEGO Marvel Super Heroes, which isn't much, but it's still pretty rad. Other than that, Moon Knight just doesn't get that much attention. That's why we need you to go out and spread the word of how awesome this character is so we can see him in more stuff. We hope that this video has given you all the basic knowledge you need to become a Moon Knight fan, and we hope that you enjoy his comics. Thanks for watching, be sure to like and subscribe, and let us know in the comments if there's a character you'd like us to make a character crash course on. See you next time.